What's good, car family? Happy Wednesday. How's everybody doing tonight? I hope well, and I uh, hope Cowboys fans are enjoying hard knocks. I know a lot of people are pretty beat up about the Cowboys being featured for the third time. Uh, I enjoyed episode one last night. Um, so tonight, I want to talk about sort of a forgotten Cowboy, and uh, that's Cornell Green. And so first, you know, while I was at the card show, or even before I went to the card show, I had gotten a little bit of interest in Cornell Green, and I'd been browsing his rookie card on eBay, and I just hadn't picked one up. <clears throat> but while I was at the show, I did. Um, so it's 1964, Philadelphia, Cornell Green. Um, it's not in perfect condition, but it's a pretty, pretty decent card. Um, auto, not the best, but, uh, yeah, figure if I could get his rookie with an auto on it, it's obviously a, you know, in-person or TTM auto, you know, that, that, hey, that'd be cool, right? And you see he's listed as a halfback on there, and, uh, Green was actually a corner and safety for the Cowboys, but anyhow, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, I wanted to, to tell... A little bit of the Cornell Green story because I, I think it's an interesting one. Um, he's a guy that really should be a Cowboys legend, but in a lot, a lot of ways, he's mostly forgotten. Um, so the Cowboys um, in the 60s and 70s were trendsetters when it came to the draft. Um, Cowboys chief scout. Gil Brandt, uh, long time had worked with Tex Scram and Tom Landry. Um, he led the way um, as far as, you know, uh, coming up with new ideas to, to draft players. Um, he was an innovator and he was known for things uh, for like using computer programs to evaluate players' strengths and weaknesses um, or using psychological tests to determine whether or not a player might be successful. Um, these were things that no, no one had ever done before at the time and you know back then in the 60s and 70s it was almost viewed as like voodoo and a lot of people said like the Cowboys players were robotic and computer players and it was a different way of approaching the draft like metrics and you know all that stuff that exists today but um he also thought outside the box and he would oftentimes draft players that were just pure athletes um or you know, successful at other sports. Um, and the two most, you know, the two most successful examples of this were Bob Hayes, who, by the way, was a Hall of Famer, and Cornell Green. Um, so Cornell Green never played a down of college football. Uh, he was a basketball forward for U Utah State. Um, he left as the school's all-time leading rebounder and fifth leading scorer. Uh, Brant envisioned Green as a he's he was six three, six four, physical guy. Uh, with, he envisioned him as a corner, and he had great athleticism and leaping ability. Um, Green, Cornell Green, had been drafted by the Chicago Zephyrs, an NBA team. But in the meantime, during the summer, after meeting with Brant, he decided to come to Cowboys camp uh, in 62, figuring that he could last a couple weeks before getting cut and make a thousand bucks before heading off to play, at the, play in the NBA. And the, the story that Gil Brant tells is that he offered Green two fifty, and Green was like, um, "You're gonna have to pay me a whole lot more than that to play." And you know, uh, Brant said, "Oh, I never asked him how much a whole lot more was, but apparently a whole lot more was like five hundred dollars a week." You know, it was this ridiculously low amount. So um, that's that's the story. It's actually you can Google that. It's on YouTube. Um, but the thing is, with Green, is he never got cut. He never played for the Chicago Zephyrs in the NBA, right? Um, by the end of his rookie season, he was a starting corner for the Dallas Cowboys. And he ended up playing 12 seasons for the Cowboys. Um, he made three consecutive Pro Bowls at corner from 65 to 67, including twice being an All-Pro. 
And these were for doomsday defense Cowboys teams. Um, in the 70s, he moved to safety and he made two more Pro Bowls, including 71 when the Cowboys won their first Super Bowl. Um, so when they won that first Super Bowl, he wasn't just a contributor. He was a primary player on that team. Um, he's one of the rare defensive backs to earn multi-Pro Bowl invites as both a corner and a safety. Uh, the others on that list, Ronnie Lott, Rod Woodson, Charles Woodson, and Cornell Green's teammate, Mel Renfro. The thing those four guys have in common that Green doesn't, they're all Hall of Famers. <clears throat> um, he had 35 career interceptions, seven career fumble recoveries, five career touchdowns. Uh, in his 12 seasons, the Cowboys won seven division titles, two NFC championships and a Super Bowl. He played in 15 playoff games. And along with Mel Renfro, uh, he formed one of the most feared cornerback duos in the NFL. And uh, Cornell Green isn't even in the Cowboys' ring of honor, much less the Hall of Fame. Um, the Cowboys will likely never induct Cornell Green to the ring of honor because um, they don't typically do that after a player has been retired for more than a few years. Um, and I'm not talking about Jimmy Johnson. Um, just typically. Um, but he really, really is one of the all-time great Dallas Cowboys and is extremely deserving and extremely overlooked. Um, and I'll even go as far to say that it might be green and not former Cowboys safety Darren Woodson who should be the next Dallas Cowboy elected to the NFL Hall of Fame. Appreciate y'all watching. Keep it real. I'm out.